Bitcoin Accumulation Country. It's that time of the week again. My name is Phil. This is the Fun with Bitcoin podcast, and we are in season three, and this is episode 21. I've got a great conversation coming up with Nick can't mine. We kind of go through his, uh, you know, his rabbit hole story, and we talk about the the different things that uh, you know that he's doing in Bitcoin and around Bitcoin, and you know, obviously we uh, get a little cosmic and uh, you know have some fun. Anyways, so before we get into the chat with Nick can't mine, we are going to talk about dollar cost averaging and Swan Bitcoin. For anybody who is interested in dollar cost averaging and who wants to be purchasing Bitcoin but doesn't want to be spending their time constantly watching the charts and listening to traders that they really have no idea whether these people are credible or not. And you kind of just want to put this in kind of in a passive sleep mode where you're simply just accumulating and hodling and then being able to transfer that Bitcoin out to your own private address. So if you're interested in doing that and that falls in in your wheelhouse, then you are looking for Swan Bitcoin. With Swan Bitcoin, the three main takeaways are we've we can do automatic withdrawal from a bank account, automatic purchases of BTC. You can time them based on your uh, when you receive your check. You know you can do it. Uh, you know let's say once um, you can do it once a month, um, or you can do it per pay period as well. Um, there's lots of options for you to be able to customize how you purchase. And you could automatically withdraw to your uh, your chosen address. So if you're interested in a Bitcoin only platform um, that is doing the uh, the great work of helping onboard people, then you definitely want to check out Swan Bitcoin. I'm going to have the uh, the link to their website in the show notes. All right. The moment we've all been waiting for. Here is my discussion with Nick Can't Mine. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me on another episode of Fun with Bitcoin. I've got a fellow Bitcoiner that um, actually he was the uh, the first person who who ever interviewed me, um, and that that was definitely you know humbling, and uh, I, I was I was really taken aback. And ever since then, I, I've always I've, I've watched his uh, you know his tweets, and I've seen his kind of Bitcoin personality grow. And I'm super excited to have him on my podcast. I am talking about Nick Can't Mine. Nick, how you doing, man? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Dude, it's absolutely amazing having you on the show, and it's really great to see how, like, um, you know, you've you've grown in the Bitcoin space, and you're doing some really good things, working with great people. Um, just taking a look at your profile, uh, I could see that you're so now you're you're interning for uh, for Marty Bent, and you also started the uh, the BTC Kindergarten. So we're going to talk about those things a little bit a uh, little bit later on. But first, um, I always like to kick it off with the customary rabbit hole story, man. I, I need to know, like, because you're you're a Zoomer, right? Yeah, I'm 20 years old. Yeah, man. So we definitely want to hear, you know, like I, I'm very interested. I'm 41. So I want to hear how you got into, you know, how you got into Bitcoin and, uh, you know, how it all started. Yeah. So let's kick it off, man. First, I want to say just a big thank you for having me on the show. I'm a really big fan. I listened to pretty much all your episodes. And months ago, I even bought a sweatshirt from your store shop, and I really like it. So Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm really happy to be here. Um, well, I'm my proud rabbit, to have you. <laughs> <laughs> my rabbit hole story starts off my senior year of high school um, in the fall. I really was kind of thinking about college. I didn't really know what I wanted to do yet. Um, I felt like I had to go away for college because that's just what everyone wants you to do. Like uh, there's a local university and a local community college near my house. And I was fine going to either one of those two. But like, I remember talking with people like about my future. Like I was like, yeah, I kind of want to get a job and start working. And, um, go to a local, you know, the local university, a local community college, because I got to start working on my future because my parents were moving a year after I graduated high school. So I wanted to stay in my hometown for a bit longer. And my parents were moving so like four hours car ride away from me. So I can't really live with my parents anymore and, you know, live where I want to live. So I remember just like, I always wanted like 
to make money. Obviously, everyone does. But I remember one day, my I was I just got home from school. I was sitting on my gaming computer. I think I was playing Overwatch. And it was like a few hours before I had to go to soccer practice. I grew up playing travel soccer on a really competitive team. And um, my brother and his friends come downstairs talking about some guy named Satoshi Nakamoto and, you know, magic internet money, Bitcoin. And they're telling me, they're shilling me shit coins. Like, they're talking about Ethereum. They're talking about Litecoin. They're like, oh, my brother was like, Nick, don't buy Bitcoin just yet. Buy Litecoin as well because you get it for cheaper and it's going to moon, blah, blah, blah. They had no idea what they're talking about, by the way. <laughs> and um, I remember at first I was like, it's just a fucking scam. Like, they're going to lose their money. You know, I don't even want anything to do with it. And in between Overwatch games, I had my iPad next to me and I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see a YouTuber named um, Noah J456. He tweeted and he was like, whoa, Bitcoin. And he posted a chart of it and it had gone up so much. I was like, you know, maybe this Ponzi ain't that bad. So if other people are going to be making money, I want to be making money as well. So I just decided to buy like 50 bucks worth. They helped me set up on a Coinbase and I bought that day. And I remember, I don't... (laughs) Thinking back to it, I'm not sure if the price dropped a little bit, or I'm pretty sure it was just the um, the fee, the Coinbase fee. But I remember when I bought it, instead of having fifty exactly fifty dollars, I had like forty eight or forty nine or something, and I was like, oh my god, it just dropped, and I immediately sold it. Oh my god. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know why, but like something just like clicked in my head, like when I sold it, and um. I became super interested in the space. Um, I started following a ton of stuff on Twitter about it, mainly shitcoin stuff, unfortunately. I started watching crypto YouTube, which is just awful. Um, Crypto Instagram is also terrible. Like, don't even look it up, except for American HODL's new uh, Bitcoin-only tweets. Um... And then I just remember I didn't buy him back into Bitcoin for a bit. And as the school year went on, I had money in my bank account from working the previous summer. I worked at a, uh, I worked at a retail store for the summer. And then uh, I had like 500 bucks saved up. And as that year went on, I kind of put more and more money in the shit coins. And then as the end of the year came around the end of the school year I really had to you know decide what I'm going to do with college and um this space fascinated me so much I really didn't want like going away for school paying all that money just didn't feel right to me and I felt like really bad and torn about it because I remember talking with some friends at school and like when I told them I decided to stay in my hometown to go to school instead of going away, you know, they kind of give you this look like the fuck, like, why wouldn't you want to go away and, you know, be a Deegan for four years. And, um, I just, it, it made sense to me to do this. And my first year of college was the year I became a maximalist and I really started you know, understanding why Bitcoin, not shitcoin. And one of the people who helped me realize that was Psychedelic Alberto. I remember when I was a shitcoiner. Oh, yeah. I saw him just destroying people in the comments. (laughs) (laughs) I reached out to him on DMs and I was like, hey, like, serious question. I'm not trying to start a fight, but like, why are you a maximalist? Like, can you explain it to me? Like, what are the benefits? And we had a discussion And he was pretty much like, you know, do what you want with your money. It's your money, not mine. Bitcoin um, maximalism works for me. You know, you go to these uh, Bitcoin meetups and you just meet some of the smartest people. Like those same smart people are not messing with shit coins. You start to realize, you know, know, the economics of it. And 
I really started to dive deep into Bitcoin only. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start trying to focus on learning what Bitcoin is before I learn about any other shit coin. And the more you learn about Bitcoin, the more you realize, man, shit coins have no place in this space like at all, other than to take your Bitcoin and scam other people. And um, so that summer I got a job summer graduating high school I got a job working at a physical therapy clinic because even though I still wanted I knew I wanted to do bitcoin stuff but I wasn't sure exactly what and you know I was just starting out out of high school so it's not like I could just walk into a full-time career and um I was interested in physical therapy and my neighbor, his mom worked at a physical therapy clinic and said, Hey, we're hiring, you know, come apply and see if you get it. I applied, went in for an interview. I got it. I'm really happy I did because it was a nice flexible job and it paid really well for someone my age. So I was able to stack a ton of sats that I lost in a boating accident. But, um, (laughs) Um, yeah, I worked there for about two years and I just, two years until, um, I got laid off from COVID and then I just remember those, those two years of being in school and working was the biggest learning experience for me because it gave me so much real world experience, especially doing Bitcoin stuff, um, interacting with the people I've interacted with, you know getting the internship I got, like, everything's just been amazing. Like, I feel like these past two years, I've learned more than I will, you know, once I'm done completing my bachelor's degree, or even if I complete it. And um, I'm really thankful to be here. And yeah. Man, that's, you know what, that that is absolutely an awesome story. So, uh, when you were when you were finishing high school, I'm sorry, like what what age is that? Like sixteen or seventeen? I was eighteen. Eighteen? Okay. Uh, kids in my kids in my class were seventeen, eighteen years 17, old. Seventeen, eighteen, okay. Um no, the the reason why I'm asking is because most people, most people, even though everybody wants to earn money, right? Most people don't start to really um take their finances seriously until uh you know, much later on. Because as you know, the the Keynesian the, the, you know, the Keynesian education, you know, makes sure that, you know, you don't question the, you know, the, the knowledge that you get from school and, you know, they just inflate the money supply and, you know, one day you're going to be a good little happy camper and you're going to go pay some investment banker to go and invest your money for you so that it can, you know, grow and possibly you don't end up completely broke and starving when you're older. So it, it's very, it, you know, it's interesting that you started so early to, uh, to pay attention to the bigger picture. And for that, uh, I definitely congratulate you. Like I, I personally was only, uh, what, uh, 20, uh, I was 21, Tw- 21. I started to realize I'm like, uh, there's something wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's pretty cool, man. Thank you. One of the biggest things for me, like I said, was, um, my parents have been dreaming of building their own lake house for, for years. We used to go to this lake every summer and, um, After the first summer, we went there for a vacation only for like a week. My parents were like, we got to move down here one day. So they ended up buying a lot and they sat on it for so many years, like 10 years before actually building on it. And I remember when I graduated high school, I uh, drove down to the lake with my parents and they signed off the paperwork, got it all started, you know, like the blueprints and stuff. And, um, the workers started building on the house and about a year later i mean scratch that when they started building it and they signed off the paperwork they were like nick you know and my brother they're like you guys got a year to figure out you know where you're gonna live you know what's gonna happen because when we move we're selling the house like the house i grew up in and you can go anywhere you want you can live with us you can stay here but you know you obviously got to, you know, <laughs> you got to make a choice. Gonna, yeah. You got to make a choice. <laughs> and um, so that year I was kind of like, man, like I like the life my parents were giving me. Like we grew up in like, not rich, but like, I'd say like well off, like mid, 
upper middle class. And um, I was like, man, I don't want to like downgrade from that. So I got to start working now and um, <laughs> saving money. So I tried to save up enough to get my own apartment. Um, but having a one bedroom apartment where I live is very expensive, at least for me, because it's 1500 a month which someone, which a 1500 that, month. Yeah. For, <laughs> especially for a college student who works, who worked part-time, I, I couldn't afford that. So I, I ended up, I moved in with my grandparents for like a month and I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I left <laughs> and my friend hit me up and was like, Hey, just come crash at my place. Um, you don't have to pay rent or anything. And, um, that was super nice. I did pay rent though. Cause I felt bad of, I, I didn't want to feel like I was taking advantage of him or like, and I especially didn't want him to, I didn't want to like have that somehow ruin our friendship. So I did pay him like 400 a month for rent, which is like super, um, he was super chill about it. He was like, if you, he's like, you can pay me if you want. I don't really care. He's like, it's just a room. And I was like, uh, I'll, I'll pay you just, just, uh, you know, yeah. And, um, it's a bit of a matter of pride, right? You know, you kind of, yeah. yeah, I, I, I would too. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, um, pretty much I cut so much, so many costs down to, uh, <laughs> you're going to love this story. I cost so, I cut down so many costs to save money and buy Bitcoin with. So I remember my my first day of college i pull up to the parking lot and i turn my car off and pull out the key and i notice my car is still running and i'm like um this is a problem like i kept you know turning it on on and off on and off but it it stayed on no matter what and i even turned it off pulled out the key put it in drive and i was driving around the parking lot i was like oh my fucking god after that i took it to the after class i drove it to the um the uh, mechanic and they were like dude so here's what here's what we can do there's a part broken and we can fix it for about a thousand dollars but there's a cheaper option i said what's the cheaper option he brought me back and he uh, under the steering wheel there was like the thing that you originally would put the key in and he pulled it out of like this like white box that was connected to it and he put a screwdriver in it and like turned it and it turned on the car it was so ghetto and embarrassing like whenever i had to pick (laughs) up people or drive other people and like i'd put the key in and it wouldn't start and they'd look at me and then i have to reach under the steering wheel (laughs) and pull out the box and turn it with a screwdriver oh my god like like i was so embarrassed and my dad's like yeah that's a it's a great first date uh topic i was like no it's not oh it's brutal (laughs) but it saved me a thousand bucks and then um I, i eventually got it fixed after like I don't know how many months I just couldn't deal with it anymore because uh, it almost broke down on me because I picked up the thing one day and it kind of like fell to pieces and I had to like, I had to like put it back together with the screws and then I had to duct tape it around to make sure it didn't <laughs> fall off again. And I was like, yeah, I'm getting this fixed ASAP. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh God. Uh, I totally know the feeling. I totally know the feeling. The, the first cars, man, it's uh, it can be embarrassing. It can be embarrassing. It's like it's it's from O2. It like it's a nice car. It's a Toyota Camry, but it's like it's it's days are getting numbered. Let's just say that. Yeah, the engines on those cars just never die. Mm-hmm. That that's the uh, that that's the thing about Toyotas, you know? I mean, I I know a lot of people who uh, who own Toyotas and they uh yeah, th- those things are uh, pretty resilient. That's what I like about them, though, because it's it saves me money. It gets good gas mileage. Oh, yeah. Um, it drives smooth. And, like, growing up, my brother was super into cars, and he still is. And, like, he would buy and sell cars. He had a Miata. He had a Lexus. He's had, like, two BMWs. He's had so many different cars that he, like, 
gets new t- gets new rims on them. He gets he puts like exhaust pipes and like lowers them. Like they're like the cars are literally sitting on the ground. Yeah. And, that... um, I remember like driving that in the school, like when he would drive me, because he was only two years older than me. Like my freshman and sophomore year, when he'd be driving me, like he put this pipe on the back of the car that was loud as fuck. Oh yeah, man. Like, it woke up all my neighbors every morning and like going into school, it was just so embarrassing. Cause like, it's like seven, 8 AM. And then you just hear this huge rumble and like this little tiny car is being loud as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's not cheap either to do that to your car. I, I grew up with a lot of people that, uh, a lot of people that would uh, pimp up their, their rides, you know, and like, you know, slam them and, you know, put the rims and, you know, change out like the insides and put like, you know, graphite interiors and all this stuff. And man, that stuff is not cheap. That was my brother and his friends. And I can't tell you how much they tried to get me to do the same exact thing. It's good. Because like after a while of like accumulating wealth of working my job and saving in Bitcoin, they were like, dude, you have enough. They're like, dude, just, just spend just spend like 5K and get a car. And then just buy a cheap car off Craigslist and just slam it out. And I was like, uh, I'd rather have the Bitcoin. Yeah, that that's – if there's one thing – okay, so with cars, essentially, I, at least what, what I've learned <laughs> is that, you know, I mean, obviously you need to get from point A to point B, but cars are always a money pit. Like Mm -hmm. it's just, it's a losing, it's a losing proposition. So sure. You know, you, you buy a brand new car, you drive it off the lot. It loses almost half its value, like immediately when you drive it off the lot. So Mm -hmm. then there's also the aspect of, you know, if you go and get a used car, right. You you just got to get one that's within like three years that doesn't have too much mileage on it. And you could drive that thing for 10 years. And it, it, if you're going to do that, it's better to own your car than obviously, than I think than to lease it. I know that there's plenty of people that, you know, beg to differ and think that every three years getting another car and always having to dish out, you know, 500 bucks a month makes sense. But if you ask me, it makes no sense. Mm-hmm. You, you know, like it just doesn't, the math just doesn't work out. You, you really don't end up, if you don't buy a piece of shit, then you shouldn't be doing that many repairs on your car. So you, it shouldn't be costing you more to own a car than to lease a car. If, if it's costing you more, then sorry, you're, you're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, my uh, senior year of high school, I had a friend who's a year younger. And, you know, he's in his junior year of high school. And he's going to college the next year. And he was telling me he wants to get a credit card and stuff. And I was like, you know, whatever, that's fine. And then he he gets a car a thirty thousand dollar car you know and i'm like dude what are you doing and like now he's got to pay you know the, the monthly payments on it insurance on it and then he's slamming it out like i see him on snapchat all the time like adding new rims to it you know lowering it putting new lights on it and stuff i'm like uh i don't know and then i remember my dad he worked with um this lady and her family had season tickets to a local um, MLS team and it's DC United. I live near uh, DC United and he gave them to me and he's like, I'll invite some of your friends to go out to the game. And I invited him to go out to the game with the free tickets. And I wore my Bitcoin hat there and I was telling him, I was like, dude, like, have you ever even like thought about Bitcoin? And like, I could just tell he was not interested in it at all. Like all he wanted to talk about was cars and like spending more money on that and stuff. And like, I didn't like, you know, hassle him about it. Cause like, I hate doing that people. I really do. Except if it's like my mom and my dad, (laughs) but, um, but, uh, yeah, like that day I talked to him about Bitcoin for a little bit he was not interested. I talked about it again, just like meeting up and hanging out with them and stuff. And like, it, it's funny because the people who are spending so much money on like materialistic stuff, like don't spend like a few seconds, like actually thinking about Bitcoin. And like, I honestly doubt he's ever even looked up anything about it. 
I think it has to do with the fact that there's no instant gratification, right? Like, I mean, let, let's face it, right? Saving, saving isn't sexy, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's kind of boring. Like, you know, like, you, you know, you're going to go and, you know, pick up, let's say, you know, you're going to go pick up a, you know, a girl to, you know, take her out. You know, talking about savings and Bitcoin isn't really the sexiest thing. You know, it's 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 so much it's it's so much sexier to like pull up in you know a sick ride, you know, and like and have it slammed and you know go and like have these really expensive experiences. And I mean, that's good times, right? Like, why not? But the thing is, is that in the end, right? You 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 could still do some nice things, but you can also you you can also be saving for for the future, which. To be honest, the, the the future is all you're gonna have. Like I promise you, you know, like when you're when you're when you're 18, you know, it, it it seems like everything is happening right there on the moment. But trust me, the rest of your life is way longer than that time span when you're blowing money on useless crap. Like like when you're blowing all that money on useless crap, all of that money it could actually be you know put into a vehicle. In this case, Bitcoin, of course. But, you know, before Bitcoin, all we had were investments. You, you could actually do it back then. And the friends that I had that weren't wasting their money on sick rides, uh, those people were buying the Microsoft shares and Adobe shares way before they ever split. And, you know, or I should say, you know, way before they split more. So the, these, these people ended up doing very, very well by being very boring. You know? And, and, yeah, and in the there end, there are some trade-offs. You know, there are like you can still have a good time, but you you still have to remember that there's a life after that period, you know, and and those people who blow it all on the moment. Well, it's fun on the moment, but you still get to wake up tomorrow. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you said, there are some trade offs. Like I'm not trying to pick up a girl in a Camry and I have to pull out a screw screwdriver. (laughs) to start up the car because she she'd literally look at me and get right out the car and like go to anything else <laughs> but um, i remember my senior year of high school or it was around christmas time um i went my parents invest with a, um, a company that does all their investing and um i don't want to say the name of it just to like expose them or anything but um they i told them i was like hey i want to get into investing i want to start saving like can i open up an account so they contacted the people there and my mom drove me out there and we met up we went to like the top floor of this really nice building like everything looks super fancy and we met up and he brought out like this whole plan for me that he had like printed out and stuff and he was like walking me through everything i like didn't even know what half the words meant back then because i was so new to everything but i was like this guy's in a suit in a nice building he definitely knows what he's talking about (laughs) and um i remember like i remember him telling me he's like yeah if you work really hard for you know like 40 50 years by the time you're your dad's age you can have around one million dollars in your account and i was like oh my god that's so much money and then i after a while of being in Bitcoin, I'm like, $1 million at my dad's age, which is like 50, 60. Fuck that. <laughs> well, like, I was like, I'm just thinking to myself, I don't want to work my whole life for a measly $1 million. I bitch, I want that when I'm 25. <laughs> like, I, I want that, I want that, you know, soon. I don't want to wait my whole life for that. It's, you, you know, it's interesting, right? Like, because the the million dollars, it, it, it wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't being chipped away and taken from you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. it, 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 let's face it, right? Like, if, if the buying power was retained and they weren't printing everybody into poverty, you know, ending up being 57, you know, years old with a million bucks, it'd be cool. But the problem is, is that you're going to end up being 57 with a million bucks and have the purchasing power of 100K. So mm-hmm. it's like... Oh, yeah, no. That's something that I think a lot of people fail to see. Like a lot of... Uh, like my parents don't see that at all. They just see no. their USD number go up, but they don't even realize the purchasing power is going down. It, it, it's the trick. It's it's the trick of cheap crap, okay? Mm-hmm. You see, like... um. So, because I'm an old fart, okay, when, when you, you bought toys in the 80s, toys were actually made of metal. 
Like, you, you bought a toy and, and it didn't just break. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was a toy from the 80s, so it was a piece of shit and it didn't work. But it didn't break, you know? So it, it, wouldn't, fall, it wouldn't fall apart because it was made well. And mm-hmm. even toys before that were made better than that. So what they did is, if you think about it, right, like, they, they've just cheapened everything, you know? Like, everything you buy for the house, everything you buy for just your life in general, it's, it's, it's all just cheapened. All the materials are cheaper. Everything doesn't last as long for the most part, you know? So that, that's all they had to do to make it seem like your purchasing power hasn't gone down. It, 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 it's just a trick. Mm-hmm. It's just fiat garbage they're yeah. feeding us. You know, um, like whenever I buy clothes, like I hate overpaying for shit that, you know, like you just said, isn't going to last long. Isn't that good of material? Some of my favorite pieces of clothing came, you know, from a thrift store for like five bucks or less. Like, yep. I go to I go thrifting all the time, like not like I really hope that doesn't sound like, you know, trendy or like young or like, oh, I'm thrifting. Because like a lot of kids I know <laughs> do that and it's so fucking annoying. <laughs> like, like I'll go to like a Goodwill and I'll pick up a nice ass jacket made in some third world country that's like super nice. Like, and it's like, it's just made really well and it's lasted me years and I'm really happy with the stuff I find. Oh, that's more than, huh? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say more than a lot of the stuff I pay for, you know, like from Amazon or something, like the cheap China shit, you know. Oh, absolutely, a hundred percent. I mean, I, I can, you know, I, I can tell you, you know, I can tell you for a fact that you know a lot of the a lot of the things, even if we if we're talking about clothing, right? Well, you know, now you can sure you can go and buy a t shirt for seven ninety nine at uh, Target or Walmart, but look at the quality of that shirt after you wash it three times. Like mm-hmm. it just it it just completely falls apart, you know. It's mm-hmm. it's just all it is is unfortunately it's just garbage. And the reality is is that, uh, you know, we we've all accepted this because we all want what what is perceived value. So everybody sits there and 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 we all sit there and go, I, I want to get the best deal. It, it doesn't matter if the best deal is is selling out your you know selling out your your neighbor you know, or causing a whole bunch of people to get unemployed and everything like that. It doesn't make a difference. I just want the best deal. And every single person thinks like this or a very large number of people think like this. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, I, I get it, right? Everybody wants value for their dollar, but at the same time, you know, I, I think that we need a flight back to quality. And that's, I, I believe, what Bitcoin kind of does by creating that that base, right? That solid monetary base, is that we can build quality structures on top of a quality base. Mm-hmm. And it reminds me of uh, what you just said of uh, the people on Black Friday when <laughs> stores mark up their prices and then they, you know, cut them so it looks like you're getting a deal. Then everyone rushes to the store to buy like TVs and shit they don't need and new phones and stuff. And oh, yeah. it's interesting to see how Black Friday continues to go on under a bitcoin standard how, how long ago you know what that that's a great example how long ago did you buy your tv my tv yeah uh my parents have two tvs at our house at the house i'm currently at okay uh i don't have like a tv myself oh that's okay but like so let's say just for example right how long have they had those tvs one of the TVs is pretty new, um, got last summer. The other one we've had for years. It's not super old, um, but it's not like super new. So, so think of it like this, right? Let's say, let's say you have a TV that you know has lasted you twenty years, and you paid five hundred dollars for that television twenty years ago. Okay, excluding the the cost of power and cable, just the the raw material of the television. Okay, you divide the cost of the television by 20 years. Essentially, you figure out what it actually costed you to watch television, excluding the, you know, excluding the service costs, just the material. Okay, what the TV cost you to actually own every, you know, every single day. Like, think about that. And, and you look at somebody that goes and buys a TV every five years. Well, guess what? They're, they are, it's costing them to watch TV 
exponentially more than it is for you, and you're watching the exact same shit. <laughs> it's the same shit. It doesn't make a difference. So why are you paying more? You know what I mean? So I started doing stuff like that when I was like 17, 18, and I was like, wait a second. I'm like, that that's the whole scam. Is that they just, you know, it, it just, all it does is it keeps your cost of living up by repurchasing the same shit over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, my friend, at my friend's house, we made a ton of bread from scratch. And sometimes if we were lazy and we didn't feel like, you know, doing it all by hand, we would just put the ingredients in a bread maker that his parents had. <laughs> and this bread maker was like, I don't know how old it was, but... I think it was from the seventies or the eighties and his dad was telling me, he was like, yeah, like this is super old, but the quality on it is super good. And it's better than most of the ones that they come out with today. Oh yeah. I, I'm totally not surprised. Mm -hmm. it, it, that, that's exactly how it works. Even with power tools. You know what I mean? Like I, I've got, you know, like an old drill from my father. That's like uh, what, you know, like 40 years old. 50 years old, the freaking thing still does everything. Whereas I have a, a newer one, you know, that's like maybe five years old and it already sounds like it's falling apart and the motor's starting to like, uh, uh, it, it almost sounds like it's stripping inside. Anyways, but uh, we kind of, we kind of went off on a tangent. I uh, <laughs> wanted to go back to, uh, to Bitcoin stuff, but uh, no, that was good. Um for the, uh, I wanted to talk about your your internship with uh, with Marty Bentman. What's what's that like? Because uh, for a lot of Bitcoiners, right, especially a lot of us who started way back, you know, you gave a shout out before to Psychedelic Bart. You know, he was one of my first influences in Bitcoin Twitter, and um, one of the first podcasts I ever listened to was Tales from the Crypt. So how did uh, how did how did that ended up uh, happening? Um, I remember. I was driving down on a Friday night to my parents' house and, you know, it's a four hour car ride and I was meeting them at a restaurant before I went to the house and I pull up in the parking lot and I turn on my phone because I have, I have a thing that like you, t you plug into the, uh, like the air conditioning slot and it like holds up your phone so you can see like the GPS and stuff. And I saw American HODL at me and said, I recommend Nick can't mine. And I was like, Oh God, what was he getting me into? <laughs> and um, I opened it up and I saw Marty had tweeted that he's looking for an intern and American HODL kind of started all off. And I had so many people just flooding my, um, my uh, notifications with, yeah, Nick's the right man. I recommend Nick. I had like John Bayless and I had a ton of other people just telling uh, Marty that they should hire me for it. And um, I commented, I was like, yeah, I'm down. So Marty posted his email and I emailed him and we hopped in a Zoom call and we chatted for a bit about it because that day, um, Brady, Citizen Bitcoin, <laughs> he DM'd me and he was like, hey, we're starting Swan Bitcoin and I was meaning to DM you this a while ago, but do you want an internship with us? You know, we'll pay you X amount of money and have you do like articles and, you know, Photoshop and blah, 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 and all this other stuff, you know, content creation wise. So I had a choice between those two because Marty also offered me a position after uh, talking to him for a bit. And I love Brady. I love Swan. But I could only afford to do one at the time with a, with a school and work going on. So I chose to go with Bert, uh, Marty. And I've, I've had a really good experience so far. It's been like five, almost six months now um, doing some really cool stuff. We have a lot of big things in the uh, plan for the future that I'm really excited to be a part of. Uh, Marty's being a really good mentor to me, giving me good advice of helping me out with whatever I need help with, answering questions for me. Um, Marty's a super chill dude. He's been super lenient with me of uh, some days, like if for some reason I, ha I like wasn't able to like do as much work as I should be doing, like he was super chill with it. 
and on other days I'm I um I make up for it by like putting in like more work so I you know kind of equal it out and um yeah Marty's a super cool dude and I can talk about some of the stuff that uh we have going on if you'd like absolutely man this is awesome and it's, it's cool to uh, it's cool to hear that that side right because of course to us you know we we all just get to hear you know uncle marty on tftc so it's it's cool to hear the uh you know the business side of marty <laughs> mm -hmm. marty has a ton of stuff going on in his life like he's a super busy man like i don't i don't know if people like realize you know how much he really has going on and including that like around the start of my internship uh a big congrats to him because he just became a dad and um he's super happy with that he sent me a few pictures of him and his kid um he he just seems super happy with everything and I know uh like sometimes we'd be video chatting and then like you'd hear his baby and he'd have to go off and help his wife with the baby and stuff and uh it's just like really cool to see that and um that's fantastic the main thing i've been working on lately is dig.com so with dig i'm in a group chat with the c the ceo of dig todd garland super cool dude um he's actually a bitcoiner as well he's not a shit coiner he's a bitcoiner Very and i am in a slack group chat with him marty and the um the big the uh almost the bitcoin developers the the dig developers and um on the dig section of bitcoin when i started working on it there was 14 members now there's like let me pull it up on my phone there's 300 and 24 members as we speak and oh, oh wow this the site is really coming together. Um, it's a work in progress and there are some bugs and stuff in it being um, kinked out. And um, if you see anything, feel free to say it and, you know, message me or Marty or tweet it at us. Because whenever I find something myself or I've had a few people tweet at me like, hey, like I found a few problems and then I just go message them in the Slack group chat and they get it worked out. Um, but I remember sitting down with Marty and he kind of like sh screen shared with me and he was drawing on the screen, showing me like his plans and his visions for it. And what we want is we want more people putting their Bitcoin content on there. We want, we really want this to be like a competitor to Medium and Reddit and just filled with great Bitcoin, not shitcoin content. And you can write, you can submit articles. So if you see an article that maybe you didn't write or a video, video is mainly because, not mainly, but uh, videos would be like double points, you know, because uh, YouTube is kind of a shit show except for like BTC sessions and a few others. So it's like, we really also want to have YouTube videos out there that are good. But, you know, with Bitcoin YouTube, it's, kind of a shit show so that's hard um you can also write your own stuff and publish it submit it to be published and get it in the original content section and one of the uh things that i'm gonna announce is that in the future don't know when yet but we're looking to pay our writers via the lightning network so that's just another incentive to write there Oh, that's awesome. It's very cool that uh, you guys are looking to incorporate lightning into dig. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the website has really come. It's really coming along since I've uh, started working on it um, on the side. It's like kind of like, you know, how on medium you can like clap for an article. Yep. On dig. It's like you just click the plus dig and it gives you, you know, one dig per person. And when I started on it, the only people who were digging it were me and Marty. Like we, <laughs> we had one to two digs per post. And now we had one hit over a hundred the other day. A lot of them mainly hit like 30 to 70, um, a few twenties, 
76 on one, 54, 57. Like, latest one has 70 digs. And, like, feel free to go on there, dig.com slash Bitcoin, sign up for the space, look at what everyone has to post. And there's a lot of good content there. We're going to put a link to, uh, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Yeah, and Marty's super excited about it. I'm very fortunate and happy to be working on it. Um, other stuff, I haven't done too much other stuff because of um, just how busy Marty's been. And I've also been busy with school and writing and doing all that stuff. But he wants to help me um, edit stuff for TFTC. There's some marketing stuff he wants me to help edit, like ad placing and stuff. And um, there's, I feel like I have a lot of good ideas to market towards people my age. Like I mentioned Snapchat because they weren't looking at Snapchat yet, but like pretty much everyone my age, mainly younger, because as you get older, you kind of lose interest in Snapchat. Because I only, I mean, Snapchat's cool you kind of only use it to talk to girls, but like, as you get older, you kind of like stop being a kid and you're like, yeah, I just want to talk to him like over text or in person, you know? So it's like Snapchat is super popular with the younger group of people. And um, I constantly see Coinbase ads on there. And like, Ugh. it it's super annoying because it's Coinbase, but then it's also Bitcoin. It's like, oh, that's cool. It, like I, I would rather it be like Cash App or Swan or like Dig, obviously, or like I mean, Dig doesn't sell Bitcoin, but you know what I mean. Like yeah. anything, anything but uh, Coinbase. Coinbase is a disgrace. Mm-hmm. There you go. Do you see what Brian uh, Armstrong tweeted? Yesterday? Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. Right? He's uh, he he tried to. Uh, you you saw the tweet, right? He tried to shill uh, tried to shill shit coins to uh, J.K. Rowling. And it was a fake account, too. That's right. That's right. It was a fake account. He couldn't even tell. I think it was like the Loom Dart account or something like that. <laughs> like, really? Oh, that that just shows how, it just shows how incompetent they are. Like, I, I deleted Coinbase a while ago, and I'm so happy I did. They yep. just seem like such a scummy company. There's so many better options. There really mm-hmm. are. You know, you go to Swan. You can go to Cash App. Uh, you know, if you're in the States, you know, you River. Definitely, that's right. You can go to River Financial. Um, it, it's just, it, it's ridiculous. If you're in Canada, you can go to uh, Bull Bitcoin and sign up over there. You know, like there's plenty of legitimate places where you can go and get Bitcoin that aren't shitty Coinbase. And also there's in other countries where you don't have a, uh, good place like cash app to buy where like let's say it's harder the fees are higher i don't know like how this all could work but that could be an entrepreneurial um opportunity for someone living in that country i know i was talking to uh, a btc culture who lives in new zealand and he was telling me he was like dude like it's hard as shit to buy here in new zealand like i'm trying to like you know that'd be pretty cool if i made you know a company kind of like cash app here for the New Zealand's. Absolutely. And there's um, actually, speaking of which, in Australia, there's uh, Alex uh, Svetsky's uh, Amber. Uh, I think it's Amber app. And you, you can uh, you can buy Bitcoin through them. I think I saw that on Twitter. You yeah. said that was Australia, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and, and he's totally legit, bit, Bitcoin only, and, uh, you know, definitely support, I definitely support, uh, you know, his... Uh, you know what he does. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask you, uh, what about? Uh, so, something I saw recently that you're that you're working on is uh, with um, uh, Optimist Fields. Uh, shout out to Optimist. Uh, is uh, BTC Kindergarten? What's uh, mm-hmm. what's going on with that? So, um, about seven months ago, I think we got together and we were like, hey, like it'd be pretty cool if we made a video on YouTube about like just introductory Bitcoin stuff. And we, we did that and we answered like super simple questions just like, you know, to get uh, people's feet wet into Bitcoin. And that went pretty well. Uh, It was one of my first videos ever. So I was super nervous to do it and it kind of, 
I'm not sure if it sucked or if it was just really, I don't know. But um, Jeremiah hit us up and was like, hey, you guys need to do that again because I'm getting a ton of people commenting. I mean, not commenting. <laughs> talking to me in real life, asking me normie questions on Bitcoin, and they're just not understanding it from me. And we were talking about it too. And we we're like, yeah, you know, we'll do an episode or two and just see how it goes. And um, he had this idea of doing it like a live talk radio show. And he was like, you can have people call in and ask questions live. And that seems like a really cool idea, but we were kind of thinking that's probably going to be a little difficult to get normie people to call in to a Bitcoin podcast and ask questions. So we decided to go with Discord. And um, so if you don't know how Discord works, you can open a channel or a server, and then you can open a voice channel and you can, everyone can join the voice channel and I could just like mute at everyone. And uh, they could just be me and Optimus talking and they can type their questions in the chat or sometimes me and Optimus will have them unmute themselves and ask us questions and join the discussion. So it's like a live discussion. And um, we do have a guest coming on this Thursday, but the next Thursday, we're just gonna have like an open classroom type. So like everyone's unmuted. And when we ask questions, like everyone can talk and chime in and give, you know, their, uh, their thoughts on stuff. The first episode, we were pretty nervous to do especially because there was a gold bug who was like he was she was really trying to debate us hard on it but he, like he was pretty cool though um I thought Optimus was gonna get a little heated there for a minute but like it, it all went good but uh <laughs> he was just saying stuff like pretty he was pretty much making the argument that if he can't hold it it's not real and like oh, well, what can I do with Bitcoin if it goes to zero? Like if gold went to zero, I could still use it, you know, as jewelry or blah, blah, blah. Uh, yes, of course, the utilitarian thing, because I'm always so happy to sit there and make trinkets. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Every, everybody just has a smelter in their backyard. Oh, yeah, I've got a smelter. It's right there. Yeah, I'm going to smelt this down, turn it into something yeah. useful. These people are fucking retarded. <laughs> That's we didn't want to like call him out and like say he was fucking retarded on like the first episode but like i'm sorry <laughs> no no you're good because we were thinking the same thing like we can't i can't stand people who are like that like like if it so, goes to zero you have a way bigger problem trust me you're not gonna mm -hmm. sit there and want to start smelting things <laughs> like he was saying stuff like oh if the world goes to shit like how am I going to pay in Bitcoin? Like when I can just pay in gold and we are kind of like, dude, if the world goes to shit, you're going to want guns and bullets. You're not going to want Bitcoin or gold. You know, you're going to want to defend yourself. Like what's the point of having all that money? If you know, a bunch of people just come raid you in your house and kill you. Like if you can't defend yourself, like it's not worth having it. Okay. But you know what? Let's play that out. Okay. So, so we're at the, in this random apocalypse weirdness in the future Okay, and everybody has 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 bars of gold somehow. Okay, and we're we're carrying them around. Okay, so so what do we what do we do to interact? You and I do I cut a, a sliver of gold to to pay you for something or and and what am I like what am I using? So do we carry blowtorches? Like I don't. I, anyways, I, <laughs> I I just don't see it. I you carry like it. a makeshift furnace in your pickup truck or like. I don't know. So in the apocalypse in the future, right, we have trucks, we have gas. So it's, it's apparently pretty much like today, but for some reason we're carrying around smelters and, and gold bars to try to pay each other. The only thing this, I would this use is the, the Peter gold bar future. for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only way I could see a gold bar being useful is if, like, I'm, like, in a really bad situation and I, like, run out into a parking lot and, like, take out the gold bar and, like, break some dude's car window and, like, hijack his car <laughs> from him. Like, that's the only way I can see gold being, like, you know. So so gold, so gold is the $5 wrench attack of the apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah You'll be using gold to steal people's Bitcoin. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, I got to write that down. <laughs> I, t I tweeted something similar to that um, when uh, 
Marty interviewed some gold bug and um American Hoddle got super into it, like attacking him and stuff. And I tweeted under it and I was just like, Yeah, like I'd break his car window and like steal his credit cards and just max him out on Bitcoin. And like the whole community like they got like over a hundred something to uh likes and stuff and Oh nice. <laughs> everyone seemed to like it. Very cool. Very cool, man. So look, uh I, I think uh I'm just taking a look to see if there's any other if there's any other stuff I wanted to to cover with you. Was there was there anything that uh, that you wanted to go over? Um, let me think. Um, oh, I think you said you want to talk about my writing a bit. Oh yeah, that's right. You put out uh, you put out a couple of medium articles that uh, mm -hmm. that 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 were really really sweet. I, I mean, you. like yeah, I, I was uh, I was definitely uh, I was like man, I'm like he is thinking deep. About Bitcoin, <laughs> so I don't know if you want to go into. I don't know if you want to go into summarize them a little bit. Um, sure. Did you have any specific one or? Um, no, not really. Just you know what what got you. I guess you know what we, we can uh, we can discuss like really you know what got you to decide to to, to write, you know, and and put this information together. Um. So one of the things I get decided me to write is I've always I've always liked writing. Um. So one of the things that got me to start writing was I've always enjoyed it. Um, in school, I didn't really like it too much just because whenever I wrote something that I was really proud of, I was really sick and tired of like giving it to a teacher to like look over and revise and having her tell me like a, a million things are wrong with it. Like I get if like my grammar is wrong or if like my punctuation is not right or like other stuff, but like, I don't know, like, they always tried to force me to write a certain style in a certain way. And I really hated it. And once I started writing on my own, it really, it felt right. Like I always get people DMing me like, Hey, your grammar is wrong here. Your punctuation is wrong here or whatever. And like, that's nice. Cause I get to go in and just, uh, you know, change it real quick. But uh, I get to write in like the style that I like and that I want to write in. And um, also, you you can make money from it. It's not that much money. I mean, you need a ton of views to make anything. Like last month for Medium, I made like five bucks, which is like... Still pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I got like a couple thousand views on my articles. But, you know, that just goes to show you really need like big views to make any good money. But... Yeah. um. I was kind of like, well, this is just a start, you know, if I keep at it, like I could do this as a full-time job potentially. Yep. And, um, that's something that's really cool to me. Like I'd love to be able to work from home, just write about Bitcoin and make good money. Like that'd be the dream for me. And, uh, I started writing, I wrote my recent article was about like, you can't trust humans to govern our money and that pretty much just goes back to governments being incompetent and they're always going to print money and find excuses to print money the only way to stop this is pretty much bitcoin that you know you can't go outside of the code on bitcoin and it's it's ruthless capitalism it's it's amazing it's none of this you know fucking socialist bullshit that the government puts us through and yeah um no, absolutely. my one one of my favorites that i wrote i got the idea from um dr bitcoin because he would always tweet about the founding fathers and you know what they'd say about bitcoin so i decided you know i'm gonna write about the founding fathers and bitcoin um i did a little bit of research and i just kind of went through and kind of through my research, I was like, you know, what would the founding fathers say? And I kind of came to a conclusion that they would like Bitcoin a lot. And I'm pretty sure they would be hardcore toxic maximalists. And um, that really made me happy to realize that. And so I was like, I want other people to read this. So I stayed up one night. I like doing all my uh, writing in one sitting, which is pretty bad because it that's I should tough. probably, you know, yeah, I should probably, you know, do it over time and uh, 
just have it be better quality but i just sat down one night i wrote the whole thing um everyone at least on twitter really liked it at the end i put like four steps i just said the founding fathers would tell you to like buy your own buy and hold your own private keys run a full node stay away from shit coins and hodl this is my most successful article it's got almost five thousand views on dig that's huge Mm -hmm. (laughs) man that's awesome congrats thank you and then one i wrote recently which i really like um Saifedean Almus, the author of the Bitcoin Standard, even retweeted it. It was the opportunity cost between Bitcoin and university. And it was pretty much just my thoughts on, I kind of gave like a little bit of my rabbit hole story when I was, you know, a senior in high school. And I was talking about how, you know, the money traps and scammy behavior that goes on in this time. And I really touched on the points of how predatory banks are. Because when I turned 18, I would get mail, like physical mail and email constantly from my bank asking me to take out a credit card, student loans, and to go on a vacation. They're like, oh, you're you're a senior in high school, you stupid fuck. Go on a vacation. Take out a loan with us. Oh, my God. It it infuriated me because, like, I knew better than that, like, they they should know better than that. Like well, they absolutely do, which is why they're doing that ad. Like because <laughs> they're scumbags, and <laughs> it's it just pissed me off thinking there are so many kids who fall for that shit. Like they know, like you said, they know exactly what they're doing. They're trying to get young people who most likely don't have a job, most likely are going to college, which is already extremely expensive. They have no money. You, you, it should be illegal for them to be pestering these young kids to take out loans. It's it, that really pissed me off. So I wrote a bit about that, and I wrote a bit about how um, you could take some of your college money and instead of going to that, like let's say go to a trade school or like community college and save your money and put it in a Bitcoin, and you you're gonna get a higher return most likely. Um, like from COVID, I saw USC, University of Southern California, they raised their tuition to like 56 or 58K. And they said that like, you know, they don't really care if they do online classes or not, like you're still going to pay it. And that really frustrated me because it's like, these schools don't give a fuck about you. They just want their money. And yet many, many, many people are still going to be paying top dollar to go to these schools. Like I couldn't imagine paying 56 to $58,000 for online classes because of COVID, let alone even, even in-person classes. That's just way too much money. That, that it, it's, it's a complete racket that is, is exactly what it is. And it, it's so hard, like it's for someone my age, Because I chose to go to community college and I finish, I have three more classes that I'm going to finish next fall. And it's after that, I'm kind of thinking, well, what do I do? Like, I, I really want to, well, I know what I want to do. I want to, you know, not go to a four year school and just focus on Bitcoin related stuff and try and build a career in here. But then also it's like, you, everyone expects you to go. And it's like, if you don't go, it's, One of the things in the area I grew up in that really annoyed me is like, especially among the parents, like the parents just want you to go to a top school so they can sit around the coffee table and, you know, brag about their kid. Like, oh, my kid goes to this. My kid does this. Like, I remember talking to a girl my senior year of high school and I asked her why she wanted to go to the school she went to. And she was like, oh, well, they have a really good football team. Their campus is nice. Their food is good. I don't know what I want to study yet, but it seems like a cool place to live for the next four years. And I was just kind of like, that's a really pathetic, you know, way to decide you want to go to school. Like, I don't know. It just, a lot of it seems like a big waste to me. It's very shallow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's just too bad. 
you know, the, uh, the, that the system has gotten to that point where it's, it's almost just like a, a vanity thing, you know? Mm -hmm. People just do it out of tradition. They don't even know why they're doing it anymore. Yeah, I know. Like me and the Zoomers, we talk about it all the time. And uh, I know Jacopo wanted the Zoomers. Shout out to all the Zoomers, by the way. But uh, yep. Jacopo, he was going to study abroad. And he convinced his mom to let him have the money. And he just he just put it all into Bitcoin, which I was so hyped to see. That is so genius. Good for him, man. And then I know some of the other Zoomers, like Sam, um, he's been working. He took, after high school, he took a couple years off to work a job and save up for that, as well as stacking sats. And all the Zoomers just worked their asses off. And they're fucking... I, I can't even find the word for it. Like, they're a cool-ass group of people. Well, all of them. shout out to the Bitcoin Zoomers, the, mm -hmm. the, the future Bitcoiners. Shout out Sam, Jacopo, Seb, Stacker of the North, a.k.a. Berlund, Shammy, Biddy, Joker, um, Spook. Fuck. Uh... I'm missing one. Why? <laughs> why am I missing one? Who's the one I'm missing? There's nine of us. I just. Oh wait, no, I'm done. I said all of them. I realize I'm the ninth. I'm the ninth. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> well, look, uh, it, it's been it's been absolutely amazing uh, having you on and getting to shoot the shit with you. Really mm -hmm. cool, man. Thanks for having me, man. I I really enjoyed this. And I'm super excited. Super excited to see you know what else you uh, you end up doing in Bitcoin. And uh, I'll be right here, right along, Thanks, watching man. the journey, man. It's really cool. Thanks, man. Also really excited to keep continually uh, listening to your podcast and see where you take this. There's a lot of normies that are going to be coming in looking for content. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. No problem. All right. Cheers. See ya. I hope everybody enjoyed my conversation with uh, with Nick Kent. Mine. I'm going to put the uh, his contact details in the show notes as well. I'm going to put a link to his medium so you guys can go and check out the articles that, uh, that Nick has written. And as well, he is involved with Dig, so we're going to put a link to Dig. Thank you very much for listening. I hope everybody has a great week, and I'll catch you all next time on the Fun with Bitcoin podcast. <laughs> <laughs>